Hello and welcome to the in-depth series of Drishti IAS. An advisory has been issued by the Ministry of External Affairs targeting those who are residing in Canada or who are planning to reside in Canada. At the backdrop of the current spate in the hate crime against Indians in Canada. Also, this comes at the backdrop of the recently conducted Khalistan referendum in Canada. So, what is the matter? Has the Khalistan movement found its roots in Canada? What is the history of it? And also, Khalistan movement will be discussed in today's segment. Let us move on and talk about the different things that we are going to see here. What does the government advisory say? Why was it issued? The Khalistan referendum that was recently conducted and what is the government of Canada actually doing? Khalistan movement in India, what is the Khalsa? Basically, Operation Blue Star will also be discussed in brief. And the history of Khalistan movement as well as Canada. What is the relation, the impact and a question. Let us move ahead and talk about this particular advisory. This advisory which was given advisory which was issued by the Ministry of External Affairs which was issued on 23rd September 2022 is quite concerning. What does it say? It says that there has been a sharp increase in incidents of hate crimes, sectarian violence as well as anti-India activities in Canada. And the perpetrators of these crimes have not been brought to justice so far in Canada. This has also been said. Apart from that, Indian nationals and students need to remain vigilant and those who want to get to Canada, that means those who are in the process of uh, migrating to Canada, should also be vigilant. Apart from that, Indian nationals and students from India in Canada may also register with the High Commission of India in Ottawa or Consulate General of India in Toronto and Vancouver through their respective website or even the Madad portal. Okay, so your prelims could talk about Madad portal, do give it a look. Okay, Madad dot gov dot in and this will help them to get in touch with the government of india in in case of any emergency so it is a pretty concerning advisory moving ahead if we talk about why was it issued basically currently we see that khalistan referendum was conducted recently in canada we will talk about that as well reports of vandalizing of a hindu temple also came into the picture and of course there was a tweet as well we are deeply anguished by this hate crime that seeks to terrorize the Indian community. It has led to increased concern and insecurity in Indian community here. We have approached the Canadian government to investigate and ensure perpetrators are brought to justice swiftly. And this is because of the, uh, this particular tweet in which we are distressed at the de uh, desecration of Mahatma Gandhi statue at Vishnu temple in Richmond Hill. And this is a tweet from July. 14, 2022. Apart from that, there was a tweet for the Hindu temple as well. An Indian national was injured in shooting rampage in Ontario on 12th September. In April, 21-year-old Indian student was shot dead in Toronto. That could be a hate crime. In September 21, Prabhjot Singh Katri of uh, uh, 23 years of age was found murdered at an apartment in Truro in Canada. So we are seeing continuous increase in uh, of hate crimes in Canada and even last year, earlier last year, the pro Khalistan movement was in its full swing and it saw a clash with the Hindu community as well. So let us move on and also talk about the data. There has been a 72% surge in incidents of hate crime. If we give it a period of two years, 2019 to 2021. In 2021, hate crimes targeting victims based on their religion, it soared by 67% and by race or ethnicity, it jumped by 6%. So the government's concern is pretty validated and the government of Canada, let us see what is government of Canada doing. But before this, we have to talk about the Khalistan referendum. Now this referendum was conducted in Brampton, Ontario on 19th of September and it was conducted by pro-Khalistani group Sikhs for Justice. It has been banned in India. As a terrorist group, it has been designated but it is fully functional in Canada. Okay, And over 1 lakh Canadian Sikhs took part in this. You can see from young to old, everybody, everybody as in 1 lakh people, they took part in this particular referendum. This referendum was being conducted 
to show the sentiments of the Canadian Sikhs that we want a separate state for uh, from Punjab, uh, from India, separate state from India as in a separate country that should be carved out from Punjab and this should be an all Sikh country. This is what the referendum says. And uh, the Canadian government, when this particular issue was raised with the Canadian government by the Indian government, it refused to stop the particular referendum, saying that it is particularly peaceful and it's a democratic process. No violence is taking place over here. So it is working within the legal parameters of the country's law. So it did not actually take it seriously. The government has done, it's not the first time that the government has raised this issue. It has been multiple times for multiple times in 2010 as well. The, uh, the then Prime Minister Manmohan Singh did talk about that the uh, Punjabi, uh, the Sikh community, not the Punjabi community, the Sikh community is pretty uh, prosperous in Canada and very peace loving. But there are certain elements, those who are working against the sovereignty and integrity of India. The Canadian government says that we are all for the integrity and sovereignty of India, but anything, if it is taking place within the legal parameters of the country, we cannot curb it. Moving ahead, let us talk about the other part, like Khalistan movement in India is basically something that we have to talk about here. It's basically a movement or an ideology that promotes that Sikh faith and Sikh country, they sh political uh, Sikh group and religious Sikh group. It's not something separate. Politically and religiously, Sikh should be a part of one country. This is what the ideology says. So they want a separate Sikh state and this originated in the Punjabi Suba movement, okay? The Akali Dal, which is a Sikh-dominated political party, it sought to create a separate Sikh Suba or province, okay? And st the state's Re reorganization commission, when it came into being in order to reorganize the states of India on the basis of language, what happened? They certainly dismissed the particular, uh, the particular, um, you, know, you can say, call for a separate Suba by the name of Khalistan, okay? Then the state was trifurcated. For Punjabi speaking area, we had Punjab. For Hindi, we had Haryana. And then the Union Territory of Chandigarh. Okay. Then comes what? Certain hilly regions were also there of Punjab that was merged with Himachal Pradesh. Okay. Moving ahead, more to the story. Then here, importantly, we also have to talk about the Anandpur Sahib resolution. So the Akali Dal split for a certain period of time, but it came together under the leadership of Prakash Singh Badal. They gave a tough competition to Congress in 1967 and 1969. Now, in the 1972 election, what happened? Congress swept to power. Akali Dal lost. And what happened? They started introspecting their choices, their uh, issues. So what happened? They forged a party memorandum in which this memorandum is known as Anandpur Sahib Resolution because it took place in Anand Sahib, uh, Anandpur Sahib Gurudwara and here the blueprint of the party's future accumulated into the memorandum, the Anandpur Sahib Resolution, which said the Sikhs demand that an autonomous region in the north of India should be set up forthwith wherein the Sikh interests are constitutionally recognized as a fundamental state policy. Okay. Then, very importantly, we also have to take the name of Jarnail Singh Bindran Wale. Now, he was basically a religious scholar who travelled far and wide to Punjab, in the area of Punjab, asking for, uh, you know, uh, basically the policy was to create a separate Sikh state. But the things that he touted, he, it was basically violent in nature. So, there were threats of mass killing as well. Okay, so he travelled across Punjab garnering support as well as raising awareness to create a separate Khalistan, okay? And he also advocated a return to the Khalsa. So Khalsa, basically, we have to talk about over here is Khalsa. It is basically the purified and reconstituted Sikh community because at that time, uh, it was seen that Sikh community, when it was institutionalized by Guru Gobind Singh Ji, what happened? That they wanted to, uh, you can say, reform this community. So, Khalsa started from there and it was instituted by Guru Gobind Singh Ji on March 30, 1699. Remember this fact. And the declaration had three dimensions. First, 
it redefined the concept of authority within the Sikh community. Second, it introduced a new initiation ceremony and code of conduct. And then it provided the community with a new religion and political vision. So, religion and political vision was also one of the dimension. So, here he wanted the Khalsa to come back. And it was a more orthodox form of Sikhism. Then, according to Khushwan Singh statement to Outlook magazine in November 2004, what happened? He said that Bhindra Wale, he used very vituperative language against the Hindus, very violent language against the Hindus. And basically, he uh, was, you know, he was supported by a band of armed groups, the militants. Moving ahead, let us talk about uh, the message. His message was very appealing to Jats because they could not garner a lot of benefit in the Green Revolution. Secondly, they deprived of lower caste artisans and laborers who wanted their social status to increase, economic status to increase. They also were very uh, infatuated by, by his messages. Okay, so he was very popular. Then comes Operation Blue Star. The Operation Blue Star. Basically, Operation Sundown was rejected because there was there were messages to Indira Gandhi in which it was said that many civilians will be killed as well. So it was rejected. Then threat of mass killing started emerging as the government started biding time. The military action was ordered by the then Prime Minister Indira Gandhi between June 1 and June 8, 1984 in order to root out Janelle Singh and also the militants who were actually hiding in the Harmandir Sahib complex of Golden Temple. So you can see this was the basic philosophy beside operation, behind Operation Blue Star. Okay? Moving ahead, let us talk about the aftermath. Aftermath we can understand because the Sikh community was enraged as they saw that desecration was done of the revered Golden Temple. And because of that, India's then Prime Minister, then Prime Minister Indira Gandhi, she was shot dead by her own Sikh bodyguards. The assassination triggered anti-Sikh riots in, in which many civilians were killed, specifically Sikhs. And the Shirumani Gurudwara Prabandhak Committee, it filed a 1,000 crore damages suit uh, against the government, which had to, dealt, uh, had to be dealt with by the government in relation to Operation Blue Star. Then uh, in the court, in the Supreme Court, the uh, case was pending. And then the apex court said that you can talk to the government for an out of court settlement and it is still going on with respect to that. So the prime minister will be engaged, the current prime minister has been engaged. This was the decision in 2021. So it is still going on. Now let's talk about history of Khalistan movement in Canada. First thing that we have to understand over here that Canada is one of the countries which has the largest, one of the countries which has the largest diasporas of in, diaspora of India in the world okay and canada's preferred destination for higher education by many indians 60000 students chose to go to the country in the first half of the 2022 and it is pioneered by punjabi sikhs 60 to 65% of the application that in general is received by the canadian government to migrate to canada and settle over there it's basically from punjabi sikhs this community has become specifically very rich and politically powerful in canada and sections of community, not all, but certain sections of community also support and fund the Khalistani separatist movement in Canada. In addition, many individual Khalistani ideologues have been already hosted in Canada. As I said, this is not for the first time. Moving ahead, let us talk about the other very important facets. We have to understand in 2018, if you remember, when Justin Trudeau visited India, he pretty much got a cold shoulder from the Indian government and in 2018 when Justin Trudeau's visit to India occurred, Jaspal Atwal had been invited to two events for Trudeau before the invitation was rescinded and Jaspal Atwal is a pro-Khalistani individual, very vociferous about it. Apart from that, in the, in the same year, 2018, the Public Safety Canada, it published a report, the public report on the terrorism threat to Canada in which it was said that Sikhs are related to there are certain sections of Sikhs that is an extremist ideology group. They are pro-Khalistanis and the movement has been linked to terrorism for the first time in this particular report. So you must be thinking that we are seeing that it has already been 
you can say linked to terrorism but why the government of canada is not taking it seriously something that we need to do on the diplomatic front india should take it on the diplomatic front as much as possible because there will be an impact on relations if any if the soil of any other country is being used to launch an attack on another country there definitely there will be an impact on the relations apart from that the problem with this particular referendum is that it can filter down to indian sikhs as well and those sikhs were not actually pro khalistani in different countries so we are seeing hate crimes are already rising in the entire world we do not need very avoidable another problem let's move on to our question who among the following instituted the khalsa guru nanak dev arjun dev angad dev gobind singh ji answer this correctly i will take the names of those few participants who have answered this correctly thank you so much for watching